Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs, and this is the video for your phase one current affairs. So let's begin with our questions. But before that, if you haven't subscribed our channel, then do subscribe. And those who are coming here for the first time, guys, let me tell you that you can download this PDF on our Telegram channel, and the link of that channel is in description below. Okay. So on that note, let's quickly begin with our first question. And I must say that in this video, I have a total number of three important reports for you. First is in front of you and there are two other reports as well. So we will be looking at those reports along with some other important questions in detail. So stay with me till the end of this video. Okay, so the very first question is what is India's score in the adequacy sub-index of the Mercer Global Pension Index 2021? So here, the right answer is 33.5 uh, five is the score so guys let me tell you that there were 43 countries that were assessed in this index that assesses the sustainability or the pension ecosystem of countries of a total of 43 countries and india's rank in this is very poor it is 40 okay so we are at the third last position in this index okay so do remember this thing that India's rank is 40 out of 43. Iceland is the country that has topped this index. Whereas Thailand is at the lower position. Okay, basically is at the lowest position. <clears throat> Iceland is the new entry in this year's index. And Atahi Chauka Marvi Iceland because it has topped this index. Now we are going to look into the details of this index because this was the brief introduction these were the facts that you should be remembered you should remember on your uh, fingertips okay so these are very important from your from this index okay well, the very first thing is that mercer organization with cf institute and monash center for financial studies released this global pension index this index has Four new countries this year, Iceland, Taiwan, UAE and Uruguay. Iceland has stopped with a score of 84.2, basically this is the score. Thailand is at the bottom with 40.6 score. Now the parameters are adequacy. So we have seen India's rank in this parameter only, in this sub-index only. So adequacy, sustainability, integrity, these are the three sub-indices and you need to know that these sub-indices were further divided into 50 indicators. So more than 50 indicators are there which are classified in these three uh, sub-indices or in these three domains we can say. So adequacy, in the adequacy sub-index we measure the adequacy of the benefits that are being provided whether the pension that is being provided to the people is it sufficient for their sustainability is it sufficient for their livelihood or do we need to do more or the system is adequate or not okay so this uh, this sub index measures that sustainability so it measures the likelihood that the current system is able to provide benefits in the future what is sustainable sustainable is something that we can use in future and that can be used sorry that we can use in present and that has the ability to be used in the future that is sustainable right what is sustainable farming farming in a manner that we can use the natural resources in the present moment but also prevent the or do the biological conservation or environmental conservation so that our future generations can also use that thing so that is the basic meaning of sustainability similar is, is the case here okay how much are the present system of pension uh, robust that is something that is being assessed in the sustainability sub index okay how much can we use how much of this present pension mechanism can be used in the future as well how robust are our pension mechanisms or bodies in a country next is integrity so this sub index measures the legislative requirements that regulate the pension uh, industry in a country and uh, the more transparent and robust a legislative uh, structure of a country is the more trust the people will have on the pension system of that country agree with me so this is something that is assessed in this integrity index okay so these are the three sub indices 
now you have to remember india's rank overall basically score and india's score in these three sub indices as well i'm not saying to memorize each and every score of every country i'm just saying do it for india please okay so can be asked in your examination each of these sub index okay so 40 is india's rank 43.3 is the overall score in adequacy we have seen 33.5 in sustainability 41.8 in integrity 61.0 basically 61 so we can see the lowest score is in adequacy only that means we are not providing enough uh, pension to our older people or this also indicates that we are not covering the entire population who are eligible to get pension so this shows that we are inadequate in providing the pension okay now here some of the uh, measures are given these are the way forward so what can be done in india so that the pension ecosystem can be improved now this is not important from your phase 1 exam point of view nobody is going to ask any point from these points plus in phase 2 also you can i don't think that there would be a question on your pension particularly in descriptive answer writing if it is a mcq then obviously facts would be asked and these are not the exact facts okay and if there is a question in your descriptive then you can just mention these points if you have understood it well so these are very basic points like we have to introduce a minimum level of support for the poor aged individuals level of household debt as a percentage of gdp should be reduced pension age as life expectancy increasing the pension age as life expectancy continues to increase so we need to increase the pension age as well reducing government debt as a percentage of gdp so all of these measures have been suggested by this index for india now guys this is the table that is showing the groupings according to the score okay so there are only three countries that have scored more than 80 and india belongs to the lower strata of this index value ranking okay so we have seen india's score is 43.3 overall score so on the basis of that india has been ranked in the lower strata of this index okay along with india we have argentina japan south korea mexico philippines and thailand which country host the blue flag exercise israel uae oman qatar kuwait so the right answer is israel let me tell you that our foreign minister s j shankar visited tel aviv israel the capital of israel and there both of them have decided to continue their negotiations on free trade agreement and conclude them by the next year okay so this is nothing much there is no, nothing in this statement that you need to remember but during this visit there are there are other informations as well there are other developments in india israel relationships that might become a question in your examination so we will be looking at them uh, in uh, details but first of all let me inform you about the second code okay i hope that majority of you would already have come across this term the west asia quad so basically india israel uae and us the foreign ministers of all these countries have together held a conference a video conference for it was so during that video conference they discussed ways to increase the trade increase cooperation and this video conference is termed as a harbinger of a second quad okay so do remember this thing that for the time being there is no second quad that has been established it is just the we can say speculation of the media that there is a second quad that will be established however the cooperation among all these countries are being strengthened for example india and israel during the visit of sj shankar both of them have decided to cooperate on different matters you will understand this thing when we'll when we will go into the details of this news okay so i have covered it in detail i will be discussing that but first focus here that the second quad in the west asia even if it is formed so the main focus of this quad will be trade 
economic, social, political ties. Okay, whereas the quad that we have in the Indo-Pacific region, which includes US, India, uh, Japan, Australia. So this quad is focused more on security. So it is more focused on defense. So that would be a differentiation between both of these quad groupings. Okay, so the focus is different of both these quad. Okay. So that was all about the Quad news. Now let's go into the details of India-Israel meeting. So free trade agreement negotiations have started, which were pending for a long ago period because it's almost a decade. India and Israel have been struggling to come uh, to decide the free trade agreement. Now they have decided that they will conclude the FDA probably by June next year. Okay, so that was a basic information. The most important information is here. Israel has signed an agreement to join the International Solar Alliance. Okay, so this is a breakthrough. Okay, do remember this thing. Next point is that IEC member countries are 80 excluding Israel and signatory countries are 98 excluding Israel. Signatories may be abhi Israel ko nahi joda gaya hai because right now the framework of ISA has not been signed by Israel. It is the agreement that is for the uh, that is stating the will of Israel to enter ISA. Okay, therefore the number has not increased. So for the timing, you need to know this number. Okay. The next point is the president of Israel is Isaac Herzog and Prime Minister is. Naftali Bennett, do remember. Now let's discuss about blue flag. So blue flag is a biennial air force exercise that in Israel hosts every two years, once in every two years. And it is a multinational exercise and Indian Air Force is going to participate in this exercise. The last time India participated in this exercise was in 2017. So it was for the first time that India participated in it. and now india has announced that it will also participate in this exercise in the 2021 edition okay now apart from india us uk germany france italy greece israel all of them are participating in this exercise along with other nations so there are other nations as well so that was all about the blue flag exercise the next question is in which place has the union common uh, commerce minister Piyush Goyal launched the 250mm CR water supply scheme under the Jal Jeevan mission. So you have been given five different areas and all of these areas lie in Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, so clearly the scheme has been launched in the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. But which area is it? It is Pahalgam. So basically this scheme has been launched under the Jal Jeevan mission. So the basic purpose is to provide the tap water to every household. So the number of households that are being targeted through this scheme is 10,000. Since the number is very small, therefore the duration of this uh, scheme is also small. So this scheme will be completed by uh, the end of three months or within three months, we should say that precisely. Okay. So that is the scheme all about to provide the tap water to every household and total 10,000 households are being targeted through this scheme. Do remember the place where the scheme has been launched. Okay. According to the World Meteorological Organization's report, approximately dash million extremely poor people will be exposed to drought, floods and extreme heat in Africa by 2030 if adequate measures are not taken to mitigate the impact of climate change. So here the right answer is 180. So basically, a report has been released by World Meteorological Organization that states that the glaciers, the rare glaciers of Africa would disappear by 2040. Okay. No glacier in Africa. Now guys, here the most unfair deal is that 118 million people would be suffering from droughts, floods, extreme heat, which are all the side effects of climate change. But you would be surprised to know that all the nations, all the 54 nations of Africa contribute to less than 4% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, so they are not even contributing a lot in the GHG emissions. Still, the major impact 
has to be borne by this continent only. So that's the most unfair deal about this uh, region, about this fact, about the climate change impact. Now let's go into the deep uh, into the details of this report. Okay, so as I mentioned, rare glaciers will disappear in the next two years. Africa's 54 countries res are responsible for less than 4%. 4% bhi nahi kar rahe. Still, 1.3 billion people in African region are extremely vulnerable to the climate change. Glaciers of Mount Kiljiman, uh, Kil uh, Kilimanjaro, Mount Kenya, Rwanzori mountains in Uganda are shrinking at a faster pace than global average. And if this goes on, then their total gla uh, the it will lead to total deglaciation of the continent by 2040 of these uh, mounts by 2040. So there would be no glaciers in these mounts by 2040 if the pace of their shrinking goes on. So we have to do something. The African governments, the African region has to do something. Okay, so this reminds me that there is an African Union similar to the U European Union. So you have to tell me where is the headquarters of that African Union, okay? Coming back to this news, in Sub-Saharan Africa, the climate change would further lower the GDP uh, by up to 3% by 2050. एक तो वैसे ही जीडीपी नहीं है सब सहारन का और ऊपर से क्लाइमेट चेंज विल रिड्यूस डेट बाय थ्री परसेंट आल्सो बाय 2050 सो दिस वुड बी अ वेरी आई वुड से हार्श थिंग फॉर देम बाय 2030 अप तू 118 मिलियन एक्सट्रीमली पुअर पीपल डोज द पीपल वर लिविंग ऑन लेस देन 1.90 डॉलर अ डे विल बी एक्सपोज्ड the cost of adapting to climate change in Africa will rise to US dollar 50 billion per year by 2050, even if the global warming is capped below 2 degrees Celsius. So this would be the cost the entire African region would have to bear in order to uh, adapt to the climate change, in order to uh, adapt to the climate mitigation impacts as well, okay? Measures to mitigate the climate change. Okay. How much is India's contribution to the global emissions related to crop burning over 2015 to 2020 period, according to Blue Sky Analytics report? So here the right answer is 13%. During 2015 to 2020, India contributed 13% to the total emissions in the crop burning, the emissions which are related to the crop burning so this is a very huge percentage that india is contributing and because of this percentage india is ranked as the first country as the first polluter the major polluter if we are talking about the pollution coming from the crop burning okay so the blue sky analytics has released this report which is a startup and this startup is a part of the climate trace so climate trace is basically a coalition of different organizations and these organizations aim to work for providing the real-time data real-time high resolution data on the climate change and its impact because if you don't have the precise data you would not be able to prepare policies so in order to provide the uh, precise data to the government to the policy makers this coalition works there works in that direction okay so this blue sky analytics is a part of it and this report is in itself an example of the work that is being done by the climate trace okay so we have discussed this 13 percent of the total global emissions of uh, coming from the crop burning now in 2020 alone india contributed 12.2 percent to the cropland fire emissions the report covers both the fires caused by human activities either it is burning in the forest areas for conversion of that area or crop residue burning or the wildfire activity okay so all of these are covered in this estimate and after calculating or uh, summing up all these activities we contribute 30 percent of the total global emissions or we can say we have contributed during this period 
who has been appointed as a new CMD of National Research Development Corporation. Amit Rastogi is the right answer. So, NRDC is an enterprise under Department of Science, Scientific and Industrial Research under Ministry of Science and Technology. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video.